Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartuk-77. Last time we listened in on the group as they arrived at the frontier town of Tunis. Initially, a stockade fence greeted the contingent, and they were unimpressed. Once entry was gained into the Box Canyon, the party's attitude changed dramatically as they discovered a sprawling community with a lake and a mage tower. Geldor and Karina introduced the party to a concept called a coffer box, and the loot from the tomb was divided. The party was blown away by the amount that they had been given, to wit a sum of 1800 gold pieces worth of gems by Geldor's account. Initially, the miner felt he had offended the group by the split, but had been happily mistaken. We rejoined the party and the pair of miners inside a small stone building as a group of guards come to the doorway. Geldor stopped speaking as a tall woman, dressed in a guard attire, poked her head into the small room. Hello, Geldor. I heard you made it back into town. Everything okay? inquired the woman. The gnome waved her in with a large grin crossing his face at seeing her. Trust and no rank. Yes, yes. I have returned from a successful delve and picked up some new friends. Brave heroes? Meet Tressa and no rank. Commander of the garrison here at Tunis. Tressa, meet my new friends. The woman removed her helmet to reveal long, curly red hair. Each of the adventurers approached the woman and shook her hand with Cabe lingering a bit longer than the female anticipated. A raised eyebrow was enough to get him to release his grip. Tressa apologized and pointed out that Geldor had been spotted with strangers headed towards the coffer box, and she felt it prudent to check on the situation. Geldor laughed off the apology and told the commander that she worried too much. Cabe Silvertongue stepped up to point out that he admired someone that took a great deal of pride in their job, and he, for one, was certainly happy to have such a powerful individual being in charge of the watch, and that he would sleep better this evening knowing that. Everyone present just stared at the half-elf during his dissertation, and he was quick to pick up on the odd silence that followed. Stepping back, he looked over to Bolger and asked, Too much? The former sailor held up his fingers in an expression of a bit much. Tressa shook her head but waved off the awkward exchange. Will you be needing anything from us? asked the town guard. Tyra replied, No, they were just going to dump off their sizable hull and get rooms. The miner bowed to Tressa as she excused herself, taking her cadre of guards with her. Wonderful woman. Excellent sword arm pointed out Geldor, giving Fargus a poke to the ribs. She would certainly give you a run for your money, my large friend. Gabe moved closer to the exit to watch the commander leave until Sister Elaine smacked him upside the head. For the love of Dilo, you're making a fool out of yourself, Cabe, came the stern rebuke from the cleric. Karina had stepped up to the large rectangular box and examined it. A low whistle came with her approval at the item, and she touched it delicately. I never thought I would get to see one up close. It's magnificent. The others looked at the large mahogany box with a nonchalant attitude. The gnomish miner and Wave discussed the item until a loud throat clearing was given by the cleric. Oops, sorry guys, apologized the Wave. Gildor took a piece of parchment the Tyra had been scrawling on and looked it over. Confirming the numbers were right, the pair began to load three bags of gemstones into the wooden container and left the note on top of them. He then tapped the barrel three times and a bright light emitted from the open top of the container, shocking the adventurers. The grinning gnome then turned and looked at the party. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I forgot to explain how it works, as, as several members looked at him in a daze. So, you take this piece of parchment from over there, write down your code thing, and the amount or the list of stuff that you wish to have stored, uh, then you put everything in the barrel, and you knock three times, and whew, 
Off it goes to the wizard's fall. Easy and done, as he clapped his hands together. The group looked at each other skeptically, then turned to face Lady Irena. She shrugged her shoulders and pointed out that elves did not use such coffers, and it is a human thing. Cabe was curious and interjected his question. Where does it go, and how do you get it back? His query was met with puzzlement and another smile. Goldor nodded to Tyra and said, 100. She quickly scrawled out another parchment, just as the barrel once again glowed, and Geldor retrieved a piece of parchment from the container and put the second one in with another flash of light after knocking. Holding the new arrival, he showed the party that there was an invoice of his holdings. The group continued to be skeptical until another flash of light struck the coffer. Tyra reached in and pulled out a small bag of 100 gold coins and another parchment showing a revised version of the account balance. I strongly suggest that you folks get yourself an account. The wizards will hold on to everything you want and it can fit in the coffer and you won't have to worry about carrying it around or losing it. Anywhere there's a coffer, whoosh, you just retrieve your stuff. It's a fantastic process. The group discussed the merits of the system and seemed to be unimpressed with the process. Lady Irena pointed out that hauling too much wealth would make them easy targets to thieves, and perhaps it was a good idea considering their profession. Fargus stepped up and asked Geldor how to open an account. Tyra quickly scrawled out a message to the vault keepers requesting an account. She then handed the quill to Fargus and asked him to put on a requested account code at the bottom. Fargus handed the pen over to the elven mage, stating that her handwriting was probably better. She inquired if it could be anything they wanted, and Geldor nodded yes. If the account is already taken, it would be returned. Oh, and don't forget a secondary code, just in case, pointed out Geldor. But don't show it to anyone you don't want access for. Not even us. Lady Irena thought for a moment and scrawled two lines down in flowery print. Showing it first to Fargus, then to the others, they all nodded, looking at the parchment one last time. She committed to memory the two passcodes of Friendship of Six and Welby. The note was deposited in and three knocks followed with a light consum consuming the letter. Gildor smiled and nodded, pointing out that it was a wise idea to open the account. He suggested that they take anything they don't have a ready use for and send it to the vault so that they could get it into the system. The group was hesitant at putting their funds in, but Sister Elaine withdrew a small item from the folds of her cloak and produced Welby's box. A pall fell over the group, and she moved forward to the stack of parchment and scrawled out the request. A moment later, the coffer illuminated and the paper inside reported that their account had been opened. The cleric rever reverently put the small box inside the coffer with a note and knocked three times. The light consumed both as the four original members stood silently by. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.